In today's video, I'll be building a 3D printer enclosure. A 3D printer enclosure is a fantastic addition to a standalone 3D printer as it serves several purposes. Printing ABS on my Prusa is currently impossible because ABS is susceptible to warping when the plastic cools too fast. By using an enclosure, the heat generated by the print bed would remain inside so the layers contract evenly. Secondly, those who leave their printer in a workshop with woodworking tools may notice that when left untouched for a few weeks, the printer has a thin coat of wood dust on top. This is problematic in several ways. When the dust settles on the lubricants of the rods and bearings, it turns into an abrasive paste that not only accelerates the wear on the components, but may also reduce the print quality due to additional friction. Finally, for those who move their printer around from one place to another, moving the enclosure beats having to move the printer around. I have a crawl space where I leave my 3D printers during the summer and spring time. During this time, it gets as hot as 35 degrees and as low as 5 degrees. However, in the winter, it gets as low as negative 10, so I like to bring it into the house. During this process, the printer's calibrations typically get thrown off, so I was hoping that with an enclosure, it would reduce the amount of shifting that I would induce into the frame when moving it. If you go online, there are plenty of options for all budgets. The most common enclosure is the collapsible grow tent enclosure. The fabric and thin frame makes it a cheap option to enclose a printer, as many grow tents already have exhaust ports. The second option is to buy an enclosure kit, typically made of steel with acrylic plexiglass. The best example of this is the Prusa enclosure. The enclosure starts at 349 US dollars for the bare bones kit, and for that money, you get a frame made of sheet metal, transparent acrylic side panels, and a temperature sensor with the option to add a fire suppression system, mechanical lock, white LED strip, power supply quick release, and an advanced filtration system. If you checked every option, the Prusa enclosure would cost you a total of 700 US dollars before shipping. While I'm sure the quality of the enclosure is fantastic, for 700 USD, I can buy a Bamboo Lab P1S or a small print farm of Ender 3s. This leads me to the third and final option, building your own enclosure. I had two IKEA LAC coffee tables that my Workforce One How i3 sat on for three years. I never got around to buying acrylic panels and printing the correct mounting brackets to make it a proper enclosure. However, after needing to use my 3D printer to print the design for my most recent project, the robot bartender, I noticed the amount of dust that had collected on the printer. This, paired with the fact that I haven't published a video recently, pushed me to build a proper enclosure for my 3D printers. The IKEA LAC fits the full range of motion of a 220x220 220 bed slinger 3D printer. This is why Thingiverse has countless designs that use the IKEA LAC coffee side table. Paired with the fact that it only costs 15 Canadian dollars or 9.99 Freedom dollars, it's a no-brainer for those who want a cheap DIY 3D printer enclosure. To begin, print the designs provided in the link below. The enclosure aims to retain heat, so I chose to print these in PETG at the very least, but if your printer is capable of printing ABS, that's what I'd recommend. The files are provided by Prusa themselves and include corner panel mounts, door hinges, door handles, and the spool holder. But before that, let's take a quick break to discuss our channel sponsor, PCBWay. If you've seen my last few videos, you'll notice that PCBWay has been a channel sponsor for quite a while, and this is for good reason. I'm guessing that most of you who are watching this video enjoy tinkering with electronics, so PCBWay is the service you need when you have finalized the design for your project and looking to make it a reality. PCBWay offers a handful of services, FDM 3D printing, SLA 3D printing, sheet metal laser cutting, injection molding, PCB fabrication, and CNC milling. I've personally used PCBWay's sheet metal laser cutting for my last project, the Robot Bartender, and when I used them, their ordering system was seamless and intuitive. So if you ever need any of those services, do consider PCBWay. Sourcing the acrylic panels was the most challenging part of this project. In Canada, our options are limited. We don't have many companies that provide custom acrylic panels at a reasonable price, so I ended up purchasing the panels from a store on Amazon.com that sold a kit with all the panels cut to the correct size, the screws, and magnets. 
Since it's from the US, I needed to pay import duties and shipping, but despite this, it still ended up being cheaper than sourcing all the parts locally. The panels arrived at my doorstep in less than a week. They come well packed as they survived quite a beating. The kit has both hardware for the V1 and V2 enclosures, which was nice, so whatever you end up building, there will be leftover hardware. Here is a list of all the hardware that is included in the kit. It's everything you'll need to put the enclosure together. Then comes the assembly step. The panel mounts I printed experienced shrinking, which made slotting the acrylic into the 3D printed panel mounts difficult. Had I have kept going, the panels would have snapped, so I brought out the file to expand the slots. But in the process of doing this, I expanded the slots a bit too much, resulting in them being unable to hold them in place. So I used some double-sided tape to tape the panels in place, and it seems to be holding up fine. The next stage involves integrating the lighting system and the Raspberry Pi. I designed a custom enclosure to accommodate the Pi alongside all the supporting components. The enclosure houses a 24 volt 3 amp power supply, a single channel relay module, a 24 volt to 5 volt DC DC buck converter, the Raspberry Pi itself, and a 24 volt white LED strip. I wired the 24 volts to the input of the buck converter, which changes the voltage from 24 volts to 5 volts for the Pi. I connected the 24 volts to the relay because the relay needs a secondary power supply to operate the switch. Then I soldered the wires of the 120V switch receptacle to the power supply. The LED subsystem consists of three 24V LED strips wired in parallel using Wago 221 Quick Connect for reliable tool-free connections. The enclosure was printed in PLA with a total print time of approximately 4 hours. Next, onto the software. For those who don't know, Octoprint is an open source Linux operating system that gives any 3D printer a GUI. Webcam print monitoring, remote print start stop, print time lapse are all possible with Octoprint. To install, it's simple. Download the Raspberry Pi image installer, go through the menu until you find Octoprint, then modify the config file with your login and Wi Fi settings, then click install. After Octoprint is installed, you wire the relay up to GPIO pin 13, which is interfaced through an Octoprint GPIO control plugin. This plugin enables manual toggling and event-driven automation of the lighting system, with triggers configured for states such as print start, stop, failure, cancellation, and completion. Finally, just before putting the 3D printer into the enclosure, if you have a Prusa 3D printer, you must swap out the 180 degree cable bed holder for this 45 degree cable bed holder so that when the bed is in its furthest position backwards, the cable doesn't crash into the pan. And just like that, you're finished. You've built your very own DIY 3D printer enclosure for less than $100. Thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe if you would like to see more electronics related videos. If you have any questions regarding this project, leave them in the comments and I'll do my very best to get back to you. Thank you and bye bye.